This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. I'm Marley Oxenome from Pentester Academy TV, and welcome to our show, Access Point, where we spotlight cybersecurity companies and give an inside look at the people and technology behind the latest advancements in the industry. Today, I will be speaking with the company Ativo Networks. I'm sitting down right now with Carolyn Crandall, who is CMO as well as Chief Deception Officer of the company. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me on your show. Absolutely. So now, what does Ativo Networks do? So Ativo Networks is a deception company, and what that means is we use deception technology in order to detect the threats that are inside the network. So any threat that has bypassed a typical perimeter security defense is going to be moving inside the network, trying to do the reconnaissance, looking for credentials to steal, and we set traps and lures inside the network in order to get the attackers to make a mistake and reveal their presence. Okay, and I know you have a widespread of products. Can you talk about them for me? Absolutely. So the platform that we sell is called Threat Defend, and what that's mm -hmm. comprised of is a deception engagement server. Okay. And that sets the decoys. It also allows the full attack analysis behind it, and it allows a lot of integration so we can automate um, incident response, so okay. blocking, quarantine, threat hunting. Once you have that base system, you can layer endpoint deception on top of it. You can add some visibility tools to detect the attacker's um, paths they may take. Mm -hmm. And then you can do some additional things to create some playbooks inside of the um, inside of the system so that you say, hey, look, if I've seen this stack before, I want it to automatically do these things um, with other prevention systems. So send this information to my firewalls, send this information okay. to my EDR system, and so it'll automate a playbook, for example, around maybe a ransomware attack, so mm. you can stop them before they have a chance to do damage. Okay, awesome. And now I'm curious, why has deception become so critical in recent times? It's, you know, it's really funny. We were talking about this just the other day, that people are really frustrated right now. Breaches are happening at unprecedented rates, and people aren't getting prosecuted from it, right? It's mm -hmm. just too hard to get to attribution. And so point. if attackers are going to get into the network, you have to look at the root problem, which is why are they getting in, and why are they not being detected? And mm. it's because as a society, we've invested so much in prevention technology but times have changed. The attack surface has changed. The types of threats continue to change. The aggressiveness of these threats yep. change. So now you have to change your outlook and go, well, what am I doing around detection and response? And if I look at what I need to do for detection and response, I'm going to say, well, how do I quickly and efficiently detect the threats that are inside mm -hmm. the network? And the challenges with some of the earlier technologies is that they they um, created a lot of false positives. So mm -hmm. they were either yep. trying to look for signatures, do a, uh, attack pattern matching, and it just wasn't very efficient. But with detection, it's all about the engagement. So we don't raise an alert unless the attacker engages with us. Okay. And then what we do is, is we give you all the attack analysis and the substantiated alerts so you can go do something about it. So deception is taking off very rapidly right now because people realize trying to just big taller walls in your castle, deeper moats is not going to work. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even work for an insider or a contractor. Yep. So you have to invest in detection technologies and deception is a very efficient way to do that. Okay. And now do you think the deception technologies of today are just honeypots repackaged and what has been the evolution? Sure, absolutely. We get asked that question all the time, which yeah. is a great question. I mean, early days you had honeypots that were set up outside the network to try to, mostly for research, mm -hmm. see, okay, who's hitting my site? What are they trying to do? Well, the way deception technology is designed today is very different. So what we do is, is we look for things that are already inside the network, right? Okay. Interesting for research what's outside, but it's valuable what's inside. The other thing that a honeypot wouldn't detect is um, credential theft, right? Mm. So by putting those lures out at the endpoint and on your other uh, assets, you're able to detect when an attacker is trying to steal these credentials and move laterally. And then there's a whole bunch of things around um, the ease of deployment and oper oper <laughs> oper I always get that word messed up. Operating. <laughs> Let's go with operating. There you go. Easier. Let's go with yep. operating. Yep. How, um, how you operate the, the deception technology at mm -hmm. scale. And so with today's deception technology, it uses um, not only the ability to seamlessly deploy, mm -hmm. but it'll use machine learning in order to 
continually update. And with new adaptive deception, it actually not only learns, but it can propose these new deception campaigns, wow. which if you can think about it, if you're under attack, then you push a button and you can completely reset the synthetic deception landscape. So now the attacker goes back in and they go, wait, wait a minute, this mm -hmm. is not the landscape I thought I was looking at before, which is either going to slow down their attack or mm -hmm. act as a deterrent where they go, oh, wait a minute, I think I better choose somebody less sophisticated to try to attack because they're obviously on to me and, it's, yeah, and I've got it's to start It's not worth the effort at that point. It, right. Wow, okay. And so now what kind of companies are adopting deception technologies? Really, it's it, there's there's two sides of the spectrum. You obviously mm -hmm. get the financial organizations that have very sophisticated infrastructure, and they don't want to be next, right? Mm -hmm. So of course, so they're out there. But then you get the other folks, whether it be in healthcare organizations, professional services organizations, or just generally companies that don't have as sophisticated of infrastructure, and they need to know. Both of them need to know when their their uh, prevention systems fail. Mm -hmm. But they need to know because they know they don't know which one is going to fail. Right? Oh, they know they've point. not been able to keep up with all the latest security investments. And so they start to ask, well, if I'm not sure, then how do I put my safety net so regardless of which one fails, mm -hmm. I get that early and accurate alert, and then I can go do something about it. Okay. And now I'm wondering, doesn't using deception increase the infrastructure overhead? That is a great question. Um, it goes back to how um, deception operates. So with the TIVA, we've taken a very different approach to it. So instead of um, putting the system in line where you have to build it in with your network traffic and configurations, right. it's out of band. And so okay. there's really no disruption to the network technology, which makes it easy to operate and also very easy to scale. Um, not all deception is alike, and you really True. do need to look at the different platforms and see how they operate. Um, you know, are they in band? Do they require agents? You know, how complicated mm -hmm. is it to deploy and to um, update these things? But the way that uh, Ativo has, has designed the technology is for global scale. And we have many okay. customers that have deployed this into very large networks, into the hundreds of thousands. And so we've been able to prove that it is not, you know, it's not going to cause friction when you deploy it, and it'll scale very easily based upon just continuing to add devices and some central management systems to consolidate that threat information for strengthening of the defenses. Okay, wonderful. And so now, can you draw a comparison between deception technologies and traditional intrusion detection systems? Yep. It's a great, it's a great question, and, and I boil it down very simply to known and unknown attackers and okay. also inside versus outside of the network. And so, if if you're an intrusion detection system, you're generally looking for known attackers. You've seen the signatures before, mm -hmm. you're looking for attack patterns, and you're trying to keep them from getting into the network. Right. Right. So the difference with deception, we don't need signatures because it's all on engagement. Who steals our credentials, mm -hmm. who engages with our decoy. And secondly, we're in the network. And so um, there's really no competition. It actually works in complements. So again, we believe keep everything out of the network that you can and then have a very accurate and efficient system for when things do get in, which is, is deception. Okay. And now, would deception eventually mean the end for traditional IDS and IPS solutions? No, and I think that goes along the same line, is, is that you always want to have that strong outside defense. So mm -hmm. keep your intrusion detection and prevention systems on the outside, and mm -hmm. then use deception as a complement to it so that we catch the things that are in the inside, or maybe they're already in the inside from an insider or a supplier or other person, because in that case, the IDS systems are not as efficient as they're looking at the, the edge, and also they're looking for things based upon those signatures mm. where we don't need to have that information. Okay. And now I'm curious, what are the top de challenges deception technologies face? What do you think, at least? The top challenges yeah. that deception technology yeah. face? I think a lot of it is, is probably legacy perceptions that it is just a honeypot and it's going to mm. need somebody very skilled to operate it. It's going to take a lot of overhead to operate it. And the way that deception technology is designed today is, is not, not in that way. It's really designed right. for scale and ease of operations and really for integration to make your other prevention system stronger by being able to share the attack information and then be able to use that to strengthen the defenses by automating the blocking, the quarantine, and even the threat hunting of the, um, the information we're able mm -hmm. to share with them. Okay. And lastly, do you think attackers are already adapting to deception solutions? Yep. It is a great question, and the answer is absolutely. Mm. So our belief is that, you know, first, attackers aren't really expecting deception to be in the network today, but some are. And so 
we do operate off of an element of surprise, right? Mm -hmm. So they're not suspecting deception is there. However, we've designed our technology for the anticipating attacker. So let's say they think that deception is in there. So then it becomes about authenticity and attractiveness. So mm, okay. can our decoys look as authentic as the real devices on the network? And the answer is yes, because we can run the same operating systems, the same applications. We mm -hmm. can even run the golden images of even really specialized equipment wow. into this. So when the attacker looks through it, mm -hmm. they go, I can't tell the difference between your decoy. I can't tell the difference between your fake and your planted credentials. And we mm -hmm. even give them some tools so they can validate wow. that what that looks like and that it is real. And mm -hmm. we'll ask the question, can you tell the difference? Yep. And it's kind of cool, especially given Pen Pentester Academy, we've been able to fool so many red teams and pen testers as they try to figure out what's real and fake. And, wow. and they continue to fall for this. And so. So it's very authentic and attractive. And then the third level where deception is going to is more around that counterintelligence, right? Okay. So not only do you understand what's happening with the threat itself, but now not only at the IOC, but now let's go and look at, well, what are they looking for? Mm -hmm. Where is it coming from? And um, more information to strengthen the defenses. There's actually been a lot of debate right now with the uh, recent uh, the ACDC bill that's out there about should organizations be able to even counter hack. Mm -hmm. um, and this information gets you closer to attribution. Mm -hmm. So not that we're advocating that you should counter hack back, but um, but basically you're able to get that counterintelligence to have an idea who's doing what or mm -hmm. who's trying to do what to you. And then in maybe military and law enforcement applications, they could take it even further and go, not only do you have the documents that, that get stolen that will beacon home and tell you this information, yep. but then they could decide what to do with it afterwards. Yeah. So again, this is a little bit of what the bill will do. Our technology will facilitate that, but of course we encourage people to do that responsibility with corporations do what they do mm -hmm. best, which is defend their network and then this type of technology could be deployed for military and law enforcement to let them do what they do best, which is is try to drive to a level of prosecution and a, a safe internet and community for all of us. Wonderful. Thank you so much for speaking with me today, Karen. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Happy to be on the show. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. And that's all the time we have for today. And be sure to tune in next time for another episode of Access Point. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of the latest cybersecurity news. This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.